Oh, so the campaign has already gotten your mail for the day. Oh, they're getting so much mail. When I came. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump is showing us the mail he's been receiving from supporters around the country at the lavish Trump Tower in New York City. And those are real letters. Those are not corporate letters. Those are not letters from Exxon. These are handwritten. Those are not letters yeah. from uh, General Motors. Those are letters from people. His corporate headquarters and opulent penthouse are high in the sky here. But his campaign for the nation's highest office is run from a sparse fifth floor space on a shoestring budget with the simple guiding philosophy, let Trump be Trump. And on this day, he seems to be happy with the results. You see the polls came out, right? The, the yes, the Quinnipiac. Yes. Spending time with the candidate on the campaign trail and here at Trump Tower has given me a unique perspective on how his unconventional political style has brought him to a place in the campaign few had predicted. Do you feel like you're at an inflection point right now in your campaign? Well, we're getting such good polls, and they call it the summer of Trump. That's not me. That's everybody who's saying it. And it's been an amazing period of time for me and for politics and for what's going on. And I don't even know if it's me necessarily. It's a movement. People are tired of incompetence. They're tired of these incompetent politicians. And there's just been a tremendous surge, and they call it a surge. And if you look at the different polls, it came out 29 percent, 28 percent, 40 percent. The Gravis poll has 40 percent for Trump. And that's with 17 people in a race. So 40 percent when you have 17 okay. people is a lot. Right. So there's a tremendous movement going on. And I think it, a lot has to do with the incompetence of politicians and the government doing so poorly. Well, the reason I ask if you're at an inflection point, because to put it in your pageant parlance, you know, I mean, it's kind of been, it's not a summer fling, clearly, your polls show that, but it's, you're maybe going from the swimsuit competition to the talent competition, and you're about to introduce your tax plan. You've already yes. done your immigration plan. So do you feel now is the time to show more substance, more meat on what you're going to be doing as a presidential candidate? Well, you know, Monica, I think I've been showing a lot of meat and a lot of substance, but people would like to see it in a plan. And the funny thing is, it's mostly people such as yourself and the writers and the, the journalists and maybe the pundits that would like to see like a four-page plan or right. a 20-page plan mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. I don't think the people care. I think they have confidence in me. They know what I do is right. You know, the problem with the plan is that point one, point two, then you have to change point three. I'm talking in real life. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't work that way. You have to be flexible. You have mm -hmm. to move. And as the boxers say, you have to go with the punches. Well. I'm going to do that because the pundits want it. But the truth is, I may end up with much better than what I'm projecting right. because it's all a negotiation. And the people understand that, but the political people don't. In some ways, it will show where your thinking is and what direction yes, you want true. to lead the country that is if you become elected. So let's talk a little bit about the broad outlines of where you might go. Um, you said you want to simplify the existing tax code, probably. Um, what do you think you might do on corporate taxes? You've okay. co complained about corporate sure. inversions. Right. Corporate inversion is a huge problem. And, you know, honestly, there's a number of things you can do. You can go to a fair tax. You can go to a flat tax. You can do, go to a lot of different things. I think the quickest and the easiest is simplification of the existing tax mm -hmm. code. Uh, but we have some ideas for, I, I really, I understand the tax code probably as well as anybody that's ever done this because I've lived with it for many years. Mm -hmm. It's extremely complex. You spend millions of dollars on accountants and lawyers and all of this. You have deductions on top of deductions and then you have give backs and then you have takeaways and I mean, you have, it's ridiculous what's going on. So a simplification is the fastest way and could be the best way. And we'll be announcing it in the not too distant future. But I want to lower corporate taxes. I want to lower the rates. I want to get people to pay fair, but I want to bring taxes down. You know, we're the highest taxed nation in the world, number one, mm -hmm. by almost any standard. When you add regulations and all the other things to it, then you really, then there's not even a contest. But I want to bring down taxes. I want to simplify taxes. And we want to have something that's going to give people an incentive to do great things. You know, conservatives are the backbone of the Republican Party. And in the past, you've supported a single-payer system, of a health system, um, and assault weapons ban, I think, and, and abortion rights. So how do you get conservatives to trust you now? 
Well, I've never been a big fan of the whole abortion thing, but you have to understand, in fact, in, in interviews I said, I hate the concept, but I wasn't a politician. I never really yeah. focused on it. Nobody even asked me the question. I mean, how do you feel about abortion, or how do you feel about single payer versus something else? Single payer could have worked years ago, but we have a much more, and this was many years ago that I said right. maybe that would work. Mm -hmm. And again, that was a maybe. I wasn't a politician, but it could have worked. It can't work now, and it can't work well now. The concept that I have for insurance, which I think will be fabulous, because Obamacare is two things. Number one, the premiums are through the roof. The deductibles are ridiculous. You'll never get to use it mm -hmm. unless you get hit and by a tractor. the premiums are going up. No, the premiums said. are through the roof. They're up 40, 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Obamacare is a disaster. Not only that, it's costing the country a fortune. If we could allow the private sector to bid on insurance, when I bid, I have a very big company. When I have people in New York, I, I just go to New York. They have artificial lines around the state of New York. People from Iowa, people from California, people from New Hampshire, people from Connecticut, they can't even bid on my insurance. And the reason, you know, Obamacare is great. You talk about campaign contributions. Obamacare is great for the insurance companies. The insurance companies are making a fortune with Obamacare. But they have these artificial lines around each state, and you'll get one bid. We, we don't get any bidding. If we opened it up, and the only thing the government should do is make sure those companies that are competing are strong financially. Other than that, they shouldn't even be involved. You would have great insurance, great health insurance, and people would be proud of it. You don't drink, you don't smoke, I presume you didn't take drugs, and you did that with your children. That seems a very conservative lifestyle. Um, is that something that was important to you growing up, and how did you enforce it with your children? Well, it As a was. parent, I'm curious. Right, it was very important. I, I get a lot of credit because Ivanka's been so terrific. I have, you know, Eric is, is in the business, and Don, and, my, and I have two younger children. but. I have been asked a lot, you know, your children seems to, uh, knock on wood, I think, good. So far, so good. Uh -huh. You always have to knock on wood because yeah. who knows what happens, right? But they are great children. I was always very strong, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. And I say cigarettes because it's a good thing to say. I did it. <laughs> but no drugs, no mm -hmm. alcohol, no cigarettes. And I have so many friends of mine that are really smart guys, people that you report on. They come and they say, what do you think, what do you think? But their kids are into alcohol or they're into drugs. I mean, drugs are now the main thing, but they're into drugs and they won't be able to compete. What's one thing that you would like people to know about you that they don't, especially those who are dismissive of your campaign? Well, I think the one thing is I'm a nice person. I love helping people. I have great relationships with people. People think of me as not necessarily nice, but they think of me as very competent. You know, it's very interesting. Um, a woman heard a speech and I got a very high poll number but on leadership I was by far the highest by many times on on finance and economics and the economy I was number one by many many times I was killing everybody but except, what about niceness except on niceness I was like last and I said to the people <laughs> it was crazy a uh -huh. CNN poll and I said to the people I said you know it's sort of interesting number one I think I am a nice person I help people and a woman came up to me, she said, but are you nice enough to be president? I said, I hope I am. I'm, I think I'm a nice person. I have great relationships, but I think this is going to be an election based on competence and we need competence. Enough with the niceness. This country is in bad trouble. We need competence. And I've said it to a lot of people, Monica, this is going to be an election based on competence. It's enough with the nice. Mm -hmm. We're tired of being beaten up wow. by China, mm -hmm. by Japan, by Mexico, by every single country that does business with us. And I think it will be an election based on competence. So you have all the perks of being the president now. I mean, really, but you don't have the weight of the world on your shoulders. Are you sure you really want to be president and have, I mean, you can never turn it off. I want to make the country great again. Is this fun? It's okay. I had no idea I was going to do this well this fast. I thought it would be a much longer and we have to keep it going because we still right. have a long way to go. But I want to, this country has such potential. I love the country. I loved also, though, my other life. My other life, I was never really private per se, but I was pretty private by comparison right. to what's happening now. We're going to do a fantastic job. I'm enjoying it. We are going to make this country so amazing again. And the word again is very important because you have to add that in. It was good. I think we can make it better than ever before. 
We have to unleash it. People have lost their spirit you know, with 93 million people wanting to work. They want to work. But when you came home last night from South Carolina right. and you got your steak, and did you think, I'm like exhausted? Do I really No, I was want exhilarated. To the crowd was phenomenal. The standing ovations and everything else. I mean, I actually enjoy that. But is there something at night when you go to bed that's keeping you awake about the prospect of possibly becoming president? Well, it's the excitement not of becoming president, of taking something that's really broken. Our country's broken and fixing it. You look at Baltimore, you look at Ferguson, you look at St. Louis and Chicago and different places where they're having nothing but problems. And we're, we have powder kegs all over the country. We need jobs, we need spirit, we need so much, but our country's in serious shape. And, and it's not the excitement of maybe winning. And, you know, we have a good shot but it's the excitement of really making it great again. And that, to me, excites me more than anything else. But you, as a billionaire, as a businessman, and even when you and I talked about your stock portfolio, and when you sold a bunch of your stocks, um, you said, I really like to do things that I can control myself, and the stock market you can't control. Right. If you are president, you can't control everything. I mean, do you, do you agree or disagree that being president is not like running a business. I do, I agree, but it's also, I think it's running a business, but you have to have heart. You have to take care of women's health issues. You have to take care of poor people that don't have, that they're never gonna have a shot. And you have to take care of African-American youth who have never been in a worse position than they are right now. The unemployment rate is like 55%. They can't get jobs. I think that we actually do have a lot of control. I'm not saying you control everything you don't. But certainly, I have a lot more control that way than sitting in, you know, a beautiful Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue and running my company. I think I can make a big difference. If I didn't think I could make a difference, I wouldn't be doing this.